Hello everyone, welcome to Scaria.com. I'm Dr. Hina Khan and today we're going to discuss the abnormalities of corneal transparency over here in this lecture. In this particular lecture, we'll be highlighting the different causative factors and what can be the consequences of the uh, corneal transparency if we have a pathology that is relating to it. Cornea is a transparent organ that is present axially and radially and there are these particular anatomical features that are relating to its transparency. What can go wrong and what can be the causative factors towards this abnormality relating to corneal transparency? It can be the corneal edema. We have the dryness of the cornea, depositions on the cornea, inflammations of the cornea, corneal degenerations, dystrophies relating to cornea, vascularization, obviously the neovascularization as well as the scarring which is related to traumatic conditions. Uh, which can arise in the cornea of course. Corneal edematous conditions, how can it relate to the corneal transparency and what are the treatment modalities as well as the clinical features would be discussed over here in this particular lecture. We'd be discussing the causative factors, primarily the raised intraocular pressure, endothelial damage, injuries with corneal dystrophies, as well as secondary to the inflammatory conditions. We have epithelial damage, which can be due to mechanical injuries, chemical burns, radiational injuries and thermal injuries and of course inflammations and infections can also relate to the epithelial damage as well. The clinical features or the symptomatologies that we have to look for are the stromal haziness, reduced vision, permanent edema, epithelial vesicles and a bullous formation which is also coupled up with the loss of vision, pain and discomfort over here along with the sensations of photophobia which is experienced by the patient. We have a range of treatment modalities that are present out there depending upon the cause as well as the dehydration, hypertonic agents can be used as well as hot air can be forced from the hair dryer which can result in the corneal edematous conditions. We can relate to the or we can treat these <clears throat> patients with the therapeutic soft contact lenses in this particular condition. We can also relate to the penetrating keratoplasty Plasty. Corneal opacities are sometimes seen which can be a part and parcel of degenerative as well as dystrophic conditions. What are the causes of these corneal dystrophies? Either it can be congenital, healed corneal wounds or healed corneal ulcers. We'd be discussing the clinical features relating to the corneal opacities which are basically the loss of vision and blurred vision. The types of corneal opacities, namely the nebular, macular, leucomatous, and adherent. How do we clinically classify them and what are the clinical features as well as the treatment modalities which basically encompass the open iridectomy as well as the phototherapeutic keratectomy along with keratoplasty. We can imply with cosmetic contact lenses as well as tattooing of the scar lesions. The keratoplasties have this step-by-step -step procedure in which we have a corneal button in placed in the recipient's bed which is giving out a pattern of continuous sutures in the keratoplasty or we can also revert to the interrupted sutures as well. The corneal vascularizations, what are the four major types of the corneal vascularizations that would be discussed over here along with the pathogenetic factors leading to edematous conditions as well well as the vasoformative stimuli leading to the proliferation of the vessels which can invade the cornea. The treatment for corneal vascularizations include the use of corticosteroids, irradiation and uh, peritomy. So to watch this lecture as well as a range of medical lectures which are available on our website, do subscribe to our website and you can also start your free trial right now. Thank you for watching Scario.com.